Right, so the document cam here seems to be recording okay, and we are into another big topic. Electrophilic aromatic substitution is a very common reaction, and it's a very difficult one to do because the uh, benzene molecule is particularly stable, and phenyl molecules are particularly stable. Uh, the aromatic group, the aromatic ring, is very stable and resists any type of changes. Um, rather than being able to do addition reactions, we are only able to do substitutions, and that will take a very powerful reagent. So let's get into it. Benzene itself, C6H6, has a six carbons in a ring, and because of the alternating double bonds, there's special stability. The pi orbitals overlap with each other and it extends so that this ring sort of completes itself and they stabilize each other and we won't get too much into all the molecular orbital diagrams for benzene ring and etc just suffice it to say that this looks like an alkene but it does not have the reactivity of an alkene on the other hand if you had cyclohexene so benzene C6H6 has this structure, cyclohexene has this structure, six carbons and the double bond, be C6H12. And if you went ahead and added a nice reactant like bromine or hydrochloric acid or something like that, you would get an addition reaction. And this makes a really nice demo because if you had the bromine, it's highly colored. And so you go to dump the bromine into a solution of cyclohexene in some organic solvent, and the color disappears immediately. And it stays clear and colorless, and you end up with this dibromo product. But if you add bromine to benzene, you get essentially no reaction, no reaction whatsoever. So that's um, just these double bonds do not react like alkenes. They have their own special lack of reactivity. So one of the things you can do to a benzene ring is to nitrate it, to throw an NO2 group on it. And this is really interesting reaction because if you wanted to make TNT, trinitrotoluene, you would nitrate toluene, which is a benzene derivative. It's something very related to benzene. The first step in this is complicated all in and of itself, is you mix a reaction, um, a concoction essentially, of sulfuric acid plus nitric acid. So you take two of the strongest acids we have and you mix them together. And what happens is really interesting because normally something like nitric acid reacts as an acid because it's very acidic. But in the event here, where it encounters a stronger acid than itself, it ends up being a base. So this is sort of incredible. And what I'm doing is drawing out the dot structures with all of the atoms and all of the electrons for both the sulfuric acid and the nitric acid. And there's formal charges here. So you have an oxygen that's formally negative and a nitrogen that's formally positive. Overall, it's a neutral molecule. The OH group shows where the acidic hydrogen is. And then the sulfuric acid, again, I haven't finished putting all the valence electrons in there, but there's one of the dot structures for sulfuric acid that you'll commonly see in an organic book because they don't mind valence expanding to minimize the formal charges. So the formal charges are gone in this structure. It's a pretty decent dot structure. And what I'm gonna do to just speed the writing of the mechanism is not protonate the nitric acid where you would expect the proton to go. 
because this is a sp3 oxygen and it's negatively charged so this is where the proton would like to go but just for our purposes of making this as simple as possible we're going to go ahead and protonate the oxygen that already has a hydrogen on it so we're going to say this lone pair here is going to go fetch the H plus off the sulfuric acid and then this bonding pair of electrons becomes a non-bonding pair of electrons and so if I wanted to draw out the whole structure for the hydrogen sulfate anion without the resonance forms remember the resonance here is one of the reasons the sulfuric acid is such an awesome acid but there's the hydrogen sulfate and this is pretty much non-reactive so a lot of people write this in as a base or a nucleophile and under extreme conditions it could be but this is pretty much going to be a spectator the thing we're really interested in now is the protonated nitric acid so the protonated nitric acid and I'm trying to make sure I keep things in similar orientation to where I first started drawing this so it doesn't get too confusing as to what's going where and we're going to introduce a concept here of a leaving group so we go ahead and we protonate the nitric acid which ends up being a base of all things with the stronger sulfuric acid and that gives us this intermediate which I'm going to redraw over here and it might seem like busy work to just redraw intermediates and everything like this but I find that if I want to get really good at writing reaction mechanisms just writing the same mechanism out a few times and paying attention very carefully to things like where the formal charges are and etc etc one of the things that I left off over there was the overall charge on the protonated nitric acid because notice we had two neutral things if we transfer a proton we're going to have the conjugate base or the anion plus the conjugate acid which is a cation the sum of the formal charges add up to the overall charge so this is plus one and notice there's some repulsion here between the oxonium and the formerly positive nitrogen the concept of a leaving group is that under certain circumstances molecules or intermediates can just fall apart and so this oxonium the water is something that is fairly likely because if it just falls off with the electrons will form the stable water molecule so that's what we're going to have happen and there's other ways to draw the mechanism where you protonate in the more logical place then rearrange to this and then have the leaving group leave again we're doing this more directly we're protonating in a position that creates the leaving group which can then leave the other thing is there's other ways to rearrange the atoms and show the electron pushing we're not going to go there uh, but if you look on the web or in textbooks you'll see probably a different mechanism than this it won't be just a two-stepper it'll be a little more complicated so again if I'm trying to explain to somebody without the virtue of the pictures how do you generate an NO2 plus nucleophile or sorry electrophile an NO2 plus electrophile we would mix sulfuric acid and nitric acid the sulfuric acid protonates the nitric acid to give a reactive intermediate and then water will leave and it takes the bonding electrons with it so the stable water comes off that's the leaving group here water leaves taking the electrons with it so this arrow is really important in showing and understanding the mechanism now that would leave the nitrogen with less than an octet which would be really bad maybe but a pair of non-bonding electrons is right nearby and ready to go in and share its electrons with the nitrogen so the thing that we get is this NO2 plus
where the formal positive charge is on the nitrogen, and that's the overall positive charge. So this electrophile is super reactive and is able to add to the benzene ring because it's looking for electrons so much. So this guy is an electrophile and it's so electrophilic it will even grab the electrons in a benzene ring. So there's the first part of the mechanism. We'll do the substitution because as we said this is going to be an electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we're going to substitute one group for a different group. We're going to do it on a phenyl or a benzene type ring and we're going to do it with something that really likes the electrons, an electrophile. The first piece to nitrate something is to mix sulfuric and nitric acid to generate an NO2 plus nucleophile. Knowing and being able to write out this mechanism from memory is really important.